Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here to talk about Italy. Well, Italy in classic movies, in romantic classic movies, which is and it is not the same thing if you know what I mean. Well, we're here to talk about Italy in romantic classic movies from the 50s and the 60s, which includes some of my favorite. Even though we're heading towards September, here in Barcelona it's still super hot and it doesn't feel like summer is going anywhere, at least for this week. So I thought I'd use this last more summery week to talk about classic romantic or romance movies set in Italy during the 50s and the 60s as I was saying which tended to also be set during the summer. That genre of movies, the romantic genre, has always been really special to me. These movies have been always a real treat for me and I think we all need a bit of escapism from time to time and that's what these movies essentially offer. And that is why I wanted to share five movies that in my opinion are delightful to watch. Full disclosure, this week's video could have also been titled Let's take a look at Rosano Brazzi's filmography because three out of the five movies that I will talk about today include this Italian actor in the cast. Also, to put this week's video topic into perspective, I'll say that the relationship between Italy and Hollywood goes way back but it was really after World War II when this European country started to be used more and more as a film set as more Hollywood productions were filmed in Italy. The worldwide success of Rome and Holiday, Italy and, and more specifically Rome became a huge worldwide love destination and especially in terms of movies, in terms of classic movies and Hollywood, it was very much like Paris, the epitome of romance and passion. There were also the famous Cinecittà studios which became the largest European studios and became the center point of film productions in the European continent with examples such as the aforementioned Roman Holiday, Ben-Hur or the Barefoot Contessa. Aside from that, if we think about romantic movies and romantic comedies and dramas, the setting tends to be a very important part of the story. Much like fairy tales with which they tend to have a very close connection in terms of argument and stories. These type of films need in many instances some sort of different background from your everyday life, sometimes just a set of extraordinary circumstances or unusual circumstances taking place, sometimes everything coming together, but in any case the setting is very important in romance movies. Italy has been a very enticing place for literature and other arts, so it's no wonder that it ended up having such an impact, especially in Hollywood movies, since also the US have had lots, much like other countries, lots and lots of Italian immigration. The Italian culture is very present within, I think, and I'm by no means an expert in US culture, so it is no wonder that there are so many examples of romantic movies and other genres as well set in Italy or very much related to Italy. I personally can understand that fascination as I've been lucky enough to travel to Italy several times and it is a beautiful, beautiful country. I love the food, I love the music, I love the culture, the art, the language, but we also have to keep in mind that the image of the cities of Italy that those films provide is in most cases an idealization of the country or a very stereotyped look. But at the same time, I'm not trying in this video to discuss 
realism or an accurate portrayal of Italy. We're talking about romantic movies which again much like fairy tales they occupy a special place in my heart where fantasy, imagination, suspense of disbelief exists. So as such I will discuss these movies and although again they take place in Italian cities which are displayed wonderfully before us and we have some Italian characters too. There's always an idealization of the culture, the country. So again, as such, we're going to view or talk about romantic movies set in Italy. So with no more ado, let's jump into it. The first movie we'll talk about is you guessed it, Roman Holiday. I bet almost all the tourists that visit or used to visit Rome at some point go to La Boca de la Verita or the Mouth of Truth that appears in the movie and does the trick or the joke of the hand that Gregory Peck does in this movie. That scene from Roman Holiday is just as eternal and as iconic as the city it was set in. As much as this movie helped Audrey and Gregory's career a lot, I think it had a great impact in terms of the city appeal as a tourist destination. I think that all the elements, to be honest, in this case are perfectly balanced and it is one of those, again, eternal movies that somehow encapsulate an era, a feeling, and everything was perfect. The cast was perfect, the director, the story, everything just worked. In case there is anyone who hasn't watched the film yet, the story premise is somewhat reminiscent, at least for me, of It Happened One Night and it tells the story of a European princess on a diplomatic trip to Rome who escapes her guardians and ends up meeting a US journalist who is in, very much in need of a good scoop and romance, love blossoms between them. We also have to remember that Audrey Hepburn won an Oscar for Best Actress for this movie. It was her first US movie. She had previously worked in England, in the UK, but this was her breakthrough role. She totally made an impact. She won an Oscar and she is magnetic. She is beautiful. She is genuine. And Gregory Peck, I think he's quite wonderful too in this movie. It was his first comedic role or role that had comedy bits in it and he does this brilliantly and also the way he looks at her especially towards the end of the movie I won't say anything but oh my gosh the, the way he looks at her I'm always in awe of her of his acting it's one of the most beautiful acting I've ever seen on film. Also in the movie we have Eddie Albert who plays the photographer friend of Gregory Peck. He plays some sort of uh, what it would be later referred to as a paparazzi, which is a term that I believe came later because of the movie La Dolce Vita, which also take place in Rome and is also quite iconic. All these movies have helped increase the appeal of Rome and have had a tremendous impact as even up to our days we have we find people imitating their scenes acting them out again and in the case of Roman Holiday it kind of set or started a trend of romantic movies set in Italy but particularly in Rome. Also in terms of the city, Rome in this film is another character too. It's a bond for the characters that they will always share. It's It reminds me in a way of Casablanca with that line will always have Paris. So for the characters of Roman Holiday, they could have also perfectly have said uh, we'll always have Rome and boy the city plays a tremendous part on that. 
I'm just fishing to say that this movie had and still has a tremendous impact on anyone who watches it and it is again one of those movies much like a fairy tale that you'd like to step in at, or be able to step in at some point. After Roman Holiday came Three Coins in the Fountain and this movie totally represents your more formulaic 1950s romantic comedy or a melodrama set in stunning Italy in Rome again. For this movie they just went straight on to what audiences wanted and they gave them, they gave us uh, almost four minutes I think or over three minutes of what it feels like a, a beautiful travelogue of different spots, different places, stunning places in Rome with the fantastic, fantastic song of Three Coins in a Fountain sung by Frank Sinatra with glorious stereophonic sound, cinemascope, I mean... Seeking happiness Thrown by three hopeful lovers Which one will the fountain bless? And it feels like the plot is merely an excuse to extend that possibility of, of showing, of keep on viewing those fantastic Roman places with also a touch or a dash of Venice, which is also another of the locations of the beautiful locations of the movie. The 50s were also that period which we have discussed in other videos which television was increasingly popular and therefore studios in a way to compete and attract audiences back to the movie theaters incorporated different technical improvements in a way to make the experience of being in a movie theater even more amazing for the audience and also we have here cinemascope stereophonic sound and there was also all those scenes featuring Rome and the way that is shot in the beginning. It's again a way to entice viewers back to movie theaters. The plot is paper thin, but at the same time, even though some of the stories or situations are not realistic at all, at the same time, I think it gives you a feeling of what the 50s was in terms of the moral standards you get to see how corporations worked and Americans working abroad, in this case in Europe, and especially women, what they had to face in those days. At least you get a hint of that. And it's, it's I think, quite interesting. It also has different stories, three stories in this case, so it's quite nice to also see different characters and situations happening at the same time. I think it's quite beautifully and quite well done. In this case it was directed by John Negulesco who I think before the 50s he had done quite a few film noirs. He had directed quite a few film noirs but in the 50s at least that's how I um, knew him or came to be aware of his work. It's in the 50s in comedies like How to Marry a Millionaire. I think he was quite an efficient director for this type of movies. As I was saying, this movie has three different stories and it has six different characters, three men, three women, and one of those men, hold on to your seats, is Rosano Brazzi. And the three couples are formed by Jean Peters and Rosano Brazzi. Then we have Maggie McNamara and Louis Jourdan. And last we have Dorothy McGuire and Clifton Webb. All those actors and actresses were quite popular at the time, even though some of them are nowadays a bit forgotten, to be honest. But I think they all worked pretty well in this movie. In my case, the couples that I prefer are the one formed by Rosano and Jean Peters. I think that out of all the three couples, they are 
the most passionate, the one that it feels more real to me for what they experience. And my other favorite couple of the movie is the one formed by Dorothy McGuire and Clifton Webb, which believe it or not, have great chemistry, I think in this movie and he's not in his usual super cynical although he is but super cynical character he is somehow balanced by dorothy mcguire who is super funny in my opinion in this movie and they both work really well their relationship is also quite relatable and quite funny they bring the comedy bits in the movie and i quite enjoy them to be honest and out of those three couples perhaps the couple that is my least favorite is the one formed by maggie mcnamara and louis jordan they don't seem to at least from my perspective to have that same level of chemistry to work that well as the other two and since there's deception and kind of like this portrayal of the woman on the hunt for a man that whole deception on her part which is quite obvious and when you're watching the movie you're like oh no it's it's not possible that Louis Jourdan characters is not realizing that she is making everything up in order to like the the exact same things he does. We also have another character within the movie, aside from the city, is the Fountain of Trevi, which is where the lovers and now pretty much everyone who goes to Rome throws a coin in order to be able to return someday to Rome. And that is something that even though it's really corny, it's very well done and it's very nice to watch. And it's something that everyone who has seen the movie picks up. If you have been to Rome too, you'll know that the fountain doesn't look like it does in the movie. For one thing, it's normally packed with tourists and it's also in a very narrow place. So again, Hollywood depiction versus reality, very, very different. But all in all, I think it's a very entertaining movie, quite well done and delightful. And it's certainly a romantic film that I've watched a lot and that it's always a treat. Next movie, this time from the 60s, is Come September, which is a film that I have previously mentioned in the video dedicated to Rock Hudson, which I'll leave a timestamp here. So I strongly encourage you to watch it if you haven't already. Without going back over what I said back then, I will say that this is, in my opinion, one of the best classic romantic comedies ever made. And that's because I think it has all the elements. A great cast, terrific music, wonderful director, great script, and a beautiful location. It features Milan, it features Rome briefly and it features Portofino where Rock Hudson's villa is located and it's nowadays a famous vacation spot for celebrities. According to IMDb, this movie was shot almost entirely on location and due to weather condition, the shooting took almost 12 months. It starred, if you haven't watched it already, Rock Hudson, as I mentioned, Gina Lolo Brigida, Bobby Darin, Sandra D, and also a wonderful character actor, Walter Slesak. They're all quite amazing, I think, in here, especially Rock, Gina, and Walter. They nail it, to be honest, but also newcomer Bobby Darin and Sandra D were, in my opinion, very good. And it's again a delightful film to watch. I laugh so much even though i know exactly what they are going to say i always laugh at brooke hudson's reactions when he gets mad i laugh a lot again at some of the lines that gina lola brigida has she's super funny here laughing at italian stereotypes as well and also american versus italian stereotypes it contains lots of cliches but it's so intelligently brought up and it is so funny to watch that i just can't help to find it delightful and again one of the best romantic comedies that i've ever seen the next movie we'll talk about is summertime which is a movie that i discovered not so long ago to be honest 
and is the second movie in which we'll see the man of the hour in terms of classic romantic movies set in Italy, Rosano Brazzi again. In this instance, the film takes place in Venice, wonderfully photographed by its director David Lin, and pretty much in the fashion of his famous movie Brief Encounter, we are immersed in an intimate story between two lonely characters. Without giving away too much from the movie, it tells the story of a middle-aged secretary from the US who is taking her dream trip to Venice. And while she's there, she falls in love with an Italian, you guessed it again, with Rosano Brazzi's character and it is quite simple story but very well told very beautifully told it was based on a play by arthur lawrence and this original play was called the time of the cuckoo but in fact as i read from katherine hepburn's memoir called me i specifically looked up what she said about filming summertime and she said that basically the script was rewritten by David Lean and she was totally in awe of the British film director, the way he absorbed everything around him and in fact it seems that he became so enamored with Venice that it became his second home. As I was mentioning in the beginning it is beautifully photographed and shot, especially the first scenes when she arrives in Venice. It is so magnificent the way it is filmed that you can almost feel as you're walking with her. She plays wonderfully this very vulnerable and lonely woman. It was quite a surprise for me to watch because at first, to be honest, I postponed watching this movie for a long time because it felt like it was one of those cliche romances and I could also initially picture together Catherine Hepburn and Rosano Brazzi. They felt very different, but a couple of years ago I was finally able to find it and it, it really surprised me, as I said. I found it really beautiful. They work very well together. One that I regret, again, postponing for so long. The last movie I will talk about today is called Light in the Piazza and it's a movie that I recently, very, very recently, in fact, heard about and was able to find. And it's in fact because of Twitter and also because of the passing of Olivia de Havilland, because when that happened, I saw on Twitter many people tweeting about their favorite Olivia de Havilland films. And this particular film that I hadn't ever before heard of, to be honest, was mentioned quite a lot. And it was also part, I believe, of TCM's program for Olivia de Havilland for Summer Under the Stars, I believe. And it just kept popping up on Twitter and I had to find it. And I also had in mind back then this idea for a video. So it felt like it was something that I really had to find out about. Then I learned that Rosanna Brazzi was again in it and I just had to totally include it. I just recently watched it and it's quite different from the rest of the movies that I mentioned today. There is certainly romance in the movie but it is an unusual film I would say and Olivia de Havilland is, is great in it. As you know, she is one of my favorite actresses, as I've made it evident many times. And it is, again, a, a different type of romance. In this case, Olivia plays the mother of actress Yvette Mimieux, and they travel to Florence, in this case, for the most part of the movie. Also Rome, but it's just a small part of the movie. For the most part, again, it takes place in Florence, in Firenze. And then we have George Hamilton, who plays the son of Rosano Brazzi who falls in love with Yvette's character so he falls in love with her and is completely oblivious of anything else but her kindness her goodness and that's all he cares about basically the movie is about Olivia's conflict between protecting her daughter and letting her lead 
a full life and that's essentially the plot of the movie the romance in this case is between Yvette and George Hamilton's character and it's a very again pure and naive kind of romance first love and I think Yvette's performance is quite good as well I think she she's lovely and she's charming it is a movie that I found delightful perhaps a bit long but all in all it was a movie that I enjoyed and that I thought it would be great to include as a little mini tribute to the late Olivia de Havilland and you can see many of the sights the beautiful sights of Florence in this movie and you can see the atmosphere, the food, the cafes. It is really another movie to travel through, to travel with and be transported to Italy and enjoy some cannelloni. Something fun that I found from the movie is that their surname is Johnson and in Italy, in Florence, they're convinced that there is somehow related to Van Johnson is like a recurring joke in the movie and it's really funny and I'm glad I found out about this movie. All right, that was all for today's video, taking a look at five of my favorite classic romantic films set in Italy. There are certainly more movies that I could have included here and I'm hoping that in the comments you'll mention the ones you love the most. Another movie that I was tempted to include, it is a film that it's in fact from the 90s. I don't know how pure we are here with class, or I should be sometimes with classic movies, but it is Only You, a 90s, I don't know if you have watched it, it is a 90s movie with Marisa Tomei and Robert Downey Jr. and Bonnie Hunt I, that I really loved growing up. I hope this video again made your imagination soar that made us all be transported to lovely lovely Italy, one that I hope to return at some point and that you also enjoyed my little mini tribute to Rosano Brazzi who was quite omnipresent during the 50s and the 60s in Hollywood productions and he he's in many movies that I've have enjoyed throughout the year so here's also my mini tribute to Rosano Brazzi so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies for sharing the love for romantic movies for Italy as always take care stay safe and see you all in my next video <laughs> ciao